Hey, what's up? This is another episode of Grow Food SA. Um, so while you're out kind of walking, I encourage you, first of all, to get outside. Um, start hiking around. Start really trying to get out. And it's some of the park spaces, green spaces, the little ditches, any of this stuff that's kind of, that you can kind of get out and start exploring in. Because there's a lot of things that we can kind of forage on out there. And uh, this will just be an introduction to it. If you're really interested in looking into more about foraging, um, you know, look up regional stuff. Uh, there's a couple of different folks, Sam Kaufman. There's a Foraging Texas uh, website. So look up a couple of different um, local ones because really what you want to find is local plants and the seasons and ways to prepare them. But um, also, you know, there's a lot of precautions about how to do it. There's a lot of things that sometimes look like other plants. So you really want to be certain about this and you'll kind of like build up a, a, an awareness of what that, it, that plant looks like and how to use it, the dosages and stuff like that, the, the more that you kind of work with it. But in the very beginning, be very cautious and be very certain of your um, collection before you really start eating anything. Don't eat anything unless you're really certain of it. So we'll be kind of talking a little bit about uh, some of the things that we've been seeing while we're walking around on the trails out here coming out of summer, or coming out of spring into summer. So take care. All right, so we're up in a mulberry tree. So these mulberries can be identified by its leaf, which is usually a little heart-shaped. Uh, leaf here but in about this season here you'll notice some of the mulberries you, again they're just almost like the dewberries you want them to get this blackish color mm. good eating tons of them up in here especially whenever you get a good rainy season so, so another one that's really common out here is the mustang grapevine so we can see this grape leaf here. It'll be vining up onto trees a lot of the time. You'll see it kind of going. But it'll make these little grapes here. So these need maybe a couple, maybe a month or so. They'll get um, to the purple grape color and then you can eat those. Um, I've heard of um, Justin Duncan refer to them as coat. Uh, what is it? Um, cutthroats you know that they're pretty pretty sour um, but there's still some stuff that can be done with them you're ruining the shot get out of the shot <laughs> all right so today we're going to be talking a little bit about what's um, called the egyptian walking onion so that's this kind of wild onion um, that'll come up and form these little bulbs up here and these little bulbs oops you make these little kind of pearl like onions and so these can go in salads um, you can kind of use them just like a regular onion in some meals um, spice them or something like that um, the way that you can tell that these are wild onions or like a wild garlic and things like that versus some of the other plants that kind of look similar um, is really you got to smell them um, you can kind of uh, break this and open it up and smell what that smells like and it'll have a strong onion smell to it. Um, the next thing you, you can, they're almost like a green onion so let's see if we can get down here and grab some of these here. Okay so we got some here. So yeah that's the little green onion bulb so these are little wild edibles that you can do to help kind of spice up a salad or make a special dish out of just whenever you're hiking around. So what's cool about what makes the walking onion, the walking onion is basically those are like little seed pods so as you can see it's just all across this field here and so this what happens is it grows up like this and it'll fall down to the ground and then these will reseed over here and so you end up with this kind of walking pattern and slowly it'll just move across landscapes. I think it's even moved across this road over there so there's still some over there too. Okay so we're out hiking, we're out down by the river. Um, this is Mission San Juan area 
and it's coming out of spring into summer and out here you can find dewberries so dewberries will grow usually on the ground um, it's kind of a thorn um, it'll have a, a white flower on it and you can be able to um, look around about after the white flower forms will come the dewberry it'll get into a red stage like that sometimes they're easier to kind of spot and then that'll help you start finding the, the ripe ones. So these are edible and delicious. So what really makes this kind of prime area is you can see some of the dapple light coming through here. So that's what really allows um, the dewberries to start thriving a lot more. So you can see the dewberry vines right here, with the thorns on them. So you want dapple light, a little bit of uh, sun right covered up by some shade so look right on those fringes for dewberries this is another common one that you've seen me talk about so we're out on the tree line of a field we're able to, these are often found in people's uh, yards so this is wood sorrel so it's a heart-shaped three leaf um, so that can be eaten it's got oxalic acid in it so can the um, uh, seed pods which have even more oxalic acid in them the stems the seed pods it all gives it kind of like a citrus taste to it. it can go good with salads the only thing you want to keep in mind is you don't want to eat more than maybe a palm full in a day it can disrupt your stomach that oxalic acid can so next we have a bastard cabbage um, so this is part of the brassica family that's in the same family as um, things like broccoli, collard greens, kale. So this leaf right here can be eaten. Um, it kind of tastes like broccoli. And you can see we got some more of that wood sorrel in here. So you know these things can be added together. Um, you can tell by there's a flower on it. So usually that's really the way that I start noticing it is that whenever it comes to this flower, uh, yellow flower out here, that's really how I can identify it out in the springtime coming out of uh, into summer. So even these flowers and the stock, just like all brassicas in that family, um, can it be eaten. So these are kind of like little broccoli florets that can be eaten. Um, so yeah. You know, even if you're growing uh, broccoli or um, Brussels sprout, or a lot of the ones that'll go to that flower stage of the brassica family, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, all of those can be uh, eaten too. So here's a red bud tree. Um, so you can kind of tell what it looks like by that little heart-shaped leaf. Um, there, but its most notable way of kind of telling is these actual little red florets that kind of form on here. So these can be um, the kind of just a little snack. These little ones right here are sometimes the better ones before they open up all the way. Um, just make sure whenever you're kind of foraging flowers, make sure that there's no bugs in them, pollinators and things like that. So here is a loquat, a Chinese plum. Um, these grow pretty well in the area here too. They got a couple of seeds in them. You usually get them whenever they're kind of like this orange color or that's whenever they're kind of more ripe. You can get them whenever they're kind of yellow. You know, just be careful. Um, always kind of be, whenever you're just walking around looking, see what the neighbors are kind of growing. Um, if it was a little too close, like if it was right here closer by the road, you'd want to be careful with foraging foods from the roads because of things that can fly off of cars, the exhaust and all of that. Um, but there's still a lot of opportunities just within our own neighborhoods. So kind of go around and just see what you got growing. A lot of citruses, loquats, mulberries, a lot of those peaches. Yeah, I've seen a lot in the area.